hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep and it's a recording aimed at boring you to sleep and only listen to this or watch this on YouTube if you're doing that or Vimeo when you can safely close your eyes as this sleep session may cause drowsiness So I'm sitting here, laying back in my big black squeaky chair. Andre's around somewhere. I just took him out for a walk, so I was hoping he'd be fairly tired. But he seems to have come alive. So, see what's happening. I don't know what he's going to intend to do. Hopefully, he's going to go to sleep for a little bit. So, the point of these sessions this is the 19th, I think. I said that about my hypnotic buffet that I did earlier. But I think this is actually the 19th one. So that's not too bad. I, at one point I was doing them every day, but I also started doing let me bore your pain away sessions as well. And also looking to do more of other things, other recordings. So I might not make them every day, but they will be fairly regular maybe every couple of days and all it is really is just me just talking about absolutely anything and by focusing on my voice it allows you the chance to just take a break from whatever has been going on in your life before you press the play button on this podcast or video. what I'll do is I'll just tell you how I'm feeling I'll tell you my surroundings so I'm uh, laying on a, an exotic beach no I'm not I'm, so I'm laying, sitting down in my chair laying back it's a recliner but uh, not one of the comfortable variety it's, it's not uncomfortable but it's getting a bit worn I think it's uh, it's okay. It supports my body, which is handy. It doesn't fall apart every time I sit on it, because then there'd be no point having it. I guess with the couldn't really call it a, a chair if it didn't serve that particular purpose. Um, I'm in my living room. Two of the windows are open, letting in the air. It's about um, eight o'clock in the evening, on a Monday evening. There's birds in the background, and 
as a plane as well, in case you thought that maybe the birds in England sound like planes. Uh, that's actually a plane, but the birds, I don't know if you can hear them. It's quite faint. I'm not sure if they're even awake, that might be them snoring. So I imagine some birds do snore, maybe some birds will talk in their sleep. That one just said, no, we don't all do that. Stop being prejudiced against birds. I'm not being prejudiced, I'm just generalizing the possibility. And birds coming back again and then go, honey, shush. And the dog's starting. So there's a train in the background as well, in the distance. It's quite a quite a long way away from where I live, but not if you were travelling by plane. It wouldn't take very long at all, but to walk the railway track is actually it's not far really. Maybe ten, fifteen minute walk. So I can hear the railway, hear the trains in the distance, but they don't really honk their horns until the middle of the night. They're very generous like that. So that's a train now. This is quite a busy, a busy time because the trains go between they go on to London from here. So it's a very one of the busiest networks. So there's always trains going forward and backwards. I suppose technically technically they're always going forwards because they wouldn't be able to see where they were going if they were going backwards, but you know what I mean, they're always going towards London and then away from London and I suppose in the same way that we breathe in and we breathe out and we breathe in and we breathe out, hopefully a bit slower than I just said it. It's those kind of natural things that sometimes feels that these man-made situations like railway tracks kind of become part of nature as they cut through the fields I suppose there would be more planes as well as people are heading off for their holidays now that the weather's got nice now we're well into spring 23rd of April I think it is today 2018 People heading off to Egypt or Canada or Liverpool, I don't know, wherever they're going for their holidays. Just imagine they're sitting all those miles up. Or feet up, I don't know how how far up in the sky they are, but looking forward to what they're gonna do when they get to Megaloof or Edinburgh or wherever, maybe Cincinnati, or Egypt. They 
maybe they're traveling to India, to China. Australia, maybe, maybe that's their final destination. Maybe some people are on their way to start a new life in a new country. Maybe all they've got is the belongings, a one, one suitcase, and a dream. Maybe a, a hat in case it's really sunny because they may be like me and at the moment I'm pretty bald, I shave my head so I catch the sun quite easily. I've been telling people for years I, I could even burn in the winter, I can get sunburn in the winter. And not one person has ever laughed at that. I thought it was a quite a funny thing to say. I remember saying it for the first time when I was about 19. I thought, well, it's true, but it's also kind of humorous. But I didn't get a response. I thought, well, I'll give it another go because you never know. It might not have been the right time to to have told that particular what I classed as a fairly humorous um, statement so I thought next time maybe I'll do it after the funeral finishes I don't know, just do something a bit different but I tested it and no one, no one seems to be that interested. I find it strange that, you know, when you tell someone something and they, for some reason they don't believe it and you're telling them about yourself, because we know ourselves don't we know ourselves so so much better than anyone else could really know of course we can't see our own blind spots that's why they're called blind spots as soon as you know it's there it's no longer a blind spot so maybe other people can notice specific behavioral patterns that possibly we ourselves uh, have not yet become aware of but we're still aware of a lot more than anybody else could ever be aware of, you know, especially our internal thoughts and thinking, and belief structures and opinions, and all that stuff. And I said to people in the past that I burn, you know, I catch the sun really, really easily. And no one will believe me when I say that I don't go brown. I never go brown. It doesn't happen. And no one, <laughs> it's not that I haven't done a survey or anything, I've not traveled the world asking people if they believe that uh, I don't go brown no matter how often I go in the sun all I do is go red I just go a different level of red that's it never go brown not on my face anyway my arms tan a little bit my upper body I won't just forget about it I won't even attempt to well put it this way since I was pretty much since I was a kid 
the only people that have seen my nipples have been girlfriends. I don't, I don't take my top off in public. Just because it's not about nipples, it's, it's really not about that. That was, I don't even know why I'm mentioning nipples, but. I had such a, I, I got a lot of problems with the sun when I was a kid. So I, I kind of have to keep away from it. So I can go out in it, I can walk around and stuff, but even the other day, I met my dad for lunch, and this is last Thursday, and I had my back facing away from the sun. I was trying to sit in the shade the whole time. So all I did was walk to the place and back. And then I took Andre for a walk in the early evening when there was no, really the sun was kind of down. And I caught the sun on my forehead and it was a bit stingy, you know, it was, it, you know, the next day. So I kind of caught the sun and got a little bit burnt. And it's like, wow. It's like the sun, I think maybe the sun was shining off my dad's forehead onto me, onto my face. You know, like you do if, if you get a mirror or some kind of metallic thing and it shines the sun onto you. Maybe that's what was happening. Because my dad had sunglasses on. So maybe the sun was shining, not necessarily off of his forehead, onto mine. Because his forehead isn't made of aluminium. Or, you know, it's not, so maybe it was the glasses, maybe the glasses shone and reflected the light onto my forehead. So maybe that's what it was, I don't know. But I know that we walked around. After we had some dinner, I had my, what did I add? I had chips and an egg some stuff I had, I had so I, I didn't have any ice cream so my dad and my stepmom were going to have ice cream I wanted to have ice cream and so we went for a walk in this garden centre it's quite a big garden centre it's one of those places that's just I suppose there's different ones all around the country and maybe there's absolutely huge ones in other countries but this one's a fairly big one you know hundreds hundreds of different plants and stuff like that and it wasn't like a farmer's market it was very much uh, plants and trees and flowers and um, and inside there was lots of gardening equipment that you could buy and there's a big, well, it's a fairly good sized restaurant probably holds about 200 people and there's another shop which is the farm shop which sells like, local produce from farms you know, eggs and that kind of stuff I have been there before. It's just, it's fairly, well, it's not expensive, but it is a lot more than it costs to, you know, buy stuff in a supermarket. And I don't know, I, I should go there more often, really, and because. It is supporting, isn't it? It's so supporting the the local area and the local businesses and we 
be a well think about it maybe maybe you will go and spend a bit more time in there and maybe buy a few of the local products produces I'm not sure you know they have like jams that are made locally they've got made like strawberry jam that's made locally there's black currant jam that's uh, made locally I think there might have been some blueberry jam that's made locally and if I recall they had some marmalade which was made locally and but then they had different types of marmalade that was made locally there's uh, they had marmalade that had bits of orange peel inside or was it lemon peel orange peel or lemon peel one of those bits of peely bits that are inside the marmalade that's produced locally they also had other jars of marmalade which didn't have any shredded bits in and that's also made locally they also have different butters as well so there's the I'm not sure if all of the butters that they sell are made locally but I know some of them are but I can't think what the name of those particular butters are but you know one of the things for me is got so used to using margarine and you know easy spread stuff so you know the ones that come in the containers that you put in the fridge and you take it out and when you first open it you take the lid off it's usually a film of like plasticky paper that you have to peel off which it shows to you that it's been it was sealed you know so it's fresh and untouched and there's so many different varieties of that that's available and I don't really I don't really have a favourite I do like the taste of butter but the problem I find with butter is that it's so hard to spread on the bread I mean I, I have ruined De totally destroyed so many slices of lovely bread over the years with butter that I kind of gave up because it's so hard and it does taste nice so there's one that's made in Ireland 
it's really really nice I forget what it's called it's uh, I think it's in a kind of a silver packaging with a green clover leaf or something like that well, my friend who is Irish used to buy that when we lived together he used to buy that and he'd leave it out the thing is he didn't just leave the butter out because that's always had this thing about butter it should be kept in the fridge but if you keep it in the fridge it's too hard to spread uh, unless you're you know you're cooking so if you're bake, baking cakes or something then in a way it's probably better to have the butter to be a bit cold because then it's easier to in my experience it's easier to mix it with the flour um, but my friend used to leave the butter out but not not on a butter dish and not with a lid you know like maybe my my grandmother would do you just leave it on the side open And just I just didn't like that. Not only that, we'd buy bread and you'd always leave the bread open as well. By that I mean the, the packet. I don't mean the bread has some kind of compartment, like a door. There was no door to the bread, it was just uh, in a bag. Um just normal bread, not any kind of special Narnia bread that has a special door that you go into that leads you to a land full of baguettes or, you know, I don't know, French sticks. So, garlic bread hanging off of trees. See, you'd leave it there. The thing is with bread, it's it goes dry if you don't keep it sealed it goes dry and the thing is I didn't didn't like to moan well I, I did like to moan actually I enjoyed moaning it's a, it's a lie if I said I didn't like to moan but I didn't want to be a nag to him I didn't want to just keep going on about the same thing over and over again even though that's what I do now because that's all part of being the most boring person online I can just repeat myself over and over again and that feeling that you have when you're faced with somebody that's just going on and on and on about something that you've got no interest in at all those are the people that are the least aware that what they're saying is boring the person that's listening and I find quite often they're usually really nice people <laughs> that don't want to be rude it's much easier just to walk away from a friend and say what you're talking about than it is to someone perhaps you don't know very well Maybe. He used to leave the bread out. So I used to keep having to do the bread and put it into the cupboard, seal it up, and then I'd put the, f the butter back into the fridge so it was cold, so that he couldn't spread it on his bread. And that wasn't the reason, I just, because it was, it was summer, it was melting, the bread was, the butter was dripping. It was just melting. You know the, the way that your muscles 
feel when you're just really, really relaxed. It was a bit like that, just the butter just feeling still and relaxed and calm. At least that would that's what the butter told me. I didn't I didn't really talk to the butter. Butter doesn't talk. I don't know why I said that. This is supposed to be boring, I'm not supposed to be lying to you. Not that you're listening, but for those that are still listening to these pointless stories, remember that they may be pointless to you, but this, this is my life. This is stories, my existence in this world. And the story of the bread being left out. Admittedly, I can't think of an interesting end to that story or even some kind of bridge to take me to my next. Topic. I'm not talking about topics. What is it that topics used to be called? They used to have a different name, didn't they? Because I know that marath- um, Snickers used to be called Marathons in England. But topics. They used to have a different name. There have been a few different changes of names of products over the years. And we just get used to it, I suppose. Maybe it's like anything else. You get used to change and become accustomed to what is and no longer concerned about what was. And I think that's that's an obstacle that we're all faced with is trying to move forward past how we think things should be. Because how we think things should be is not reality. I'm not talking about making changes, positive changes. I'm talking about For example, the weather, you know, someone in July sitting in the garden saying it should be hot out here, should be able to sunbathe and they're sitting out and it's raining all over them but they're still determined to sit there laying down topless with a, a drink of juice next to them covered in suntan oil with a barbecue burning away in the corner of the garden maybe they've even put down a, some summer games like skittles or bowls or Maybe they're trying to read a a nice romantic novel and they get completely soaking wet. The rain's coming down. Really, 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 you know, the book is turning to mush. Yeah, 
that in their mind it should be sunny. It should be a hot day, they should be able to sunbathe, so they're going to do it anyway. That's what I mean in the sense of maybe accepting what is rather than how we believe things should be. I do find her a fascinating subject. Just the idea that when I hear people talk, those that thinking of how things should be, this should be this way, but it's not. I should be rich by now. Well, you're not, or maybe you are, but the person that's saying that wouldn't say that if they were. There's lots of things that we, we wish we had, we wish were different. I wish I was six for eight, but I'm not. I should be six for eight. Well, I'm not. But I should be. But I'm not. So does that mean that I'm going to act as if I am six for eight? Start walking through tall doorways and crouching down even though there's still three foot ahead of me. should be really slim. I should be able to get into a pair of jeans size 26 or 27 like I used to when I was younger. But I'm not. I should be able to get into those jeans. I should have a 27 inch waist. But I don't have that. Do I accept that? Or do I feel determined to wear those jeans? Apologies for the background sounds. I should be able to make this recording without a furry ferret running around. But I'm not. I'm not making it without a furry ferret running around because that's what he does. He sleeps about 18 hours a day. But when he's awake, he's very busy at times. Imagine trying to fit into a pair of jeans with a 27 inch waist. I'll be lucky to get them past my knees. I don't think I'll be able to get them onto my hips. And that's a size jeans I used to wear when I was in my early 20s. I was very slim back then. But I'm not now.
just listening to who Andre's up to because he's been very quiet. When he's being quiet, I sometimes mean that he's he's being naughty. I do wonder what he's doing. I hope he's okay. I just want him to be happy, really. Sometimes. chair that would have been the weirdest sounding fart in history it's just my chair the thing about drifting off to sleep is that it really is most natural thing that we ever do. Just like for Andre, the most natural thing for him to do, apart from trying to annoy me, he falls asleep so easily. also likes to climb up and to his cage and eat some food when I'm making a recording. I sometimes think he's doing it just to wind me up. And he's not, not even a quiet eater. these sessions is the more you listen to me the more often you listen to me regardless of what the session is the more positive you start to feel about yourself the more open you become towards possibilities for your future, for your life. And that's a benefit which you can enjoy realizing that even though sometimes it does sound maybe like I'm just waffling on and on and on. And of course I am. And that gives your mind a rest. The more the rest those things that were there in your mind before that are of no importance whilst listening to my voice and Andre chomping down his food like he's never been fed before You know, sometimes he actually, he 
or hide food. I always feed them. It's always got food available 24 hours a day. But he still hides food. It's just that nature, it's, that's in his nature to do that. And there's no teaching that. Can't teach it to him. Can't teach him to rob himself over everything he can. He does that naturally. It's inbuilt in his brain when he was born. What do they call that? Imprinted. I'm going to have to cut his nails or something later on because his uh, fingernails are getting a bit, a bit long. Appreciates it when it's done because then he doesn't get his nails caught in the carpet. He's still very wiggly. So, the reason why I do so many of these sessions over 800 now, I think. Why I keep doing them? I don't just do one and then just move on to a different subject. I keep doing them because there's that continuous progression, the continuous growth, the continuous relief, the continuous benefit that you can gain from listening or watching the videos regularly. I also try and make them fairly long instead of just doing a, a 10 minute or 15 minute session. I like them to be at least you know 40 minutes plus maybe 50, maybe an hour. But then, you've got more time to just let go and unwind. I think that's useful for all of us to have that opportunity to just let go and just relax and you know sometimes you know I like to listen to relaxing music sometimes but sometimes I don't want that much stimulation sometimes I want the least amount possible I think these sessions possibly offer something like that. Very minimal, just my voice. The only special effects is Andre running around. That's not really special effects, it's, yeah, he does all the all his own stunts. I don't edit really anything. Any session that I do, see so you hear the beginning all the way through to the end. Everything that I've said, any silly stuff I might have waffled on about. And the only bits I edit would be the very beginning, 
know if I make a few weird noises before I start probably for about 20 seconds before I press after I press the record button the first 20 seconds I might sing a little song probably not I might kind of let go of some gas you know just let some of the noises out of my body that are not useful during the actual session maybe have a drink of water I really I really do any tap dancing or anything like that but you know it's generally just a, a preparation of getting myself comfortable and then taking a few breaths you know which would happen anyway because you know we have to keep breathing don't we if it's a natural thing like sleeping it just happens naturally and at the end of the session the end of the recording Sometimes I'll, I don't want to say goodbye. It's usually just the sound of me getting up out of my chair and maybe I'll yawn. I rarely do sit ups or press ups. But you know, it's, it's just generally I might tidy up, I might rush to the to the toilet or something, I don't know. But usually I leave it a few seconds before I press the stop. I try and keep quiet for a few seconds at the end as I do at the beginning so that it's fairly quiet before I start talking and it's fairly quiet after I finish talking because I find that then I can edit those beginning clips and those end clips out So it sounds a bit nicer, but there's nothing edited during the actual session. But even if, even if someone, a clown, climbed up a ladder and started popping balloons outside the window, I, I wouldn't edit that out. I might stop recording um, to be fair it depends if there's lots of blooms and how loud they were and I would question why was there a clown on a ladder outside my window and just like that the television just made a weird noise but I'm not going to edit that out and the reason I don't edit stuff is there's a few reasons one is I want this to be authentic I want it to be real you know this is not a I'm not sitting in a recording studio where everything's there's no sound you know, I'm not in that environment. I'm in my home. I'm sharing my home with you, as well as my words and my time. And most importantly, the reason I don't edit is because I can't be bothered. I really can't be asked to do it. 
because I'm lazy and in the past I have edited sessions when I made my stop smoking course back in 2000 and I think it was 2009 I spent I think about 10 days solid recording that course 10 days putting it together 10 days and that includes the editing everything that I was you know to do with it and I was re-recording bits you know to make it sound better I was you know there's a lot of work done on that and for every for every minute of duration of a recording to edit the recording you would got to add up probably another four minutes so if this session is an hour long it's going to take probably about four hours to edit maybe three hours three or four hours and I'd rather just make another session not to replace this but you know I'd rather just spend that time doing something a bit more productive of course if I if if the clown was outside and he had an elephant on his shoulders and the elephant was screaming you know like elephants do like really loud then yeah I, you know I'd they'd, they'd come to a point you know, if there was too much background sound, I guess I'd I'd need to kind of draw a line at some point on there. But I'd probably be too busy trying to figure out how the not only why the clan was up a ladder outside my home, outside the window with an elephant on his shoulders, but how? physically was able to do it I mean that definitely would be a I'd probably go live on Facebook with that I'd record that put it on live on Facebook and the title would just be question marks or what you know what on earth but in reality probably not likely to happen so I suppose I could deal with what is happening rather than what could happen I could deal with reality and the reality is I'm coming to the end of this session and when I finish this recording, I will transfer the file from the recording studio. I've got a mini recording studio, Tascan. I will transfer it to my laptop, the file. I will then do the minimum editing as far as taking off the end and the beginning then I will download and transfer or convert that file from a, a WAV file into an mp3 file which will reduce the size significantly then I will upload it to SoundCloud and then I will share that SoundCloud recording to Facebook I'm on my main page and also to Facebook on my Facebook um, page page rather than my just my normal page 
where I've got about 30, 31,000 followers or something on there and hardly anybody ever responds to anything that I post but I'll post it on Twitter I'll post it on a couple of other places as well or share it rather on those places I will then upload it to two of my podcasts on Spreaker I've got a Let Me Bore You To Sleep podcast and also the Sleep Hypnosis podcast so I'll post this upload this to both of those then I will make a video out of this file out of this recording, turn it into a video which will take probably an hour or two to convert it, to process it and then I'll upload it to my YouTube channel Jason Newlands Sleep Hypnosis and I'll also upload it to my Vimeo channel vimeo.com forward slash Jason Newland where all my videos are. And then I might treat myself to some ice cream as a little reward for having made two sessions today and for also having accomplished a few little bits that I needed to do. I changed my bedding, did some washing up, had a bath, took Andre for a walk, made two recordings. I realise none of that sounds very exciting, but it's not supposed to. And what would it be like if I suddenly started talking about exciting things at the end of a session that is supposed to be boring? So, that's the end of this let me bore you to sleep session this recording is made by me Jason Newland on the 23rd of April 2018 my website is jasonnewland.com and support me if you want. You take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you next time. Lots of love. Bye.